<clears throat> Hi and welcome to part four of my talk on loneliness. I'm Dr. Jana Stunitzka. I'm the founder and CEO of the Intimate Revolution Festival, a festival dedicated to end loneliness and bad sex. Today I want to talk about how we can counteract loneliness. As I've shown in the pre previous parts of this talk, we evolved as social animals, as social creatures. We need this tribe to survive, to feel safe and to not have stress. Because this stress, when um, applied chronically, so when you're lonely for a longer period of time, that takes a heavy toll on the human body. That's what I cover in two, part two, health and loneliness. And in the part three, I covered how the touch of human skin, oh, how human-human interaction uh, might be one of the antidotes against loneliness. I want to start this with my very own story. When I was 15, I became a victim of sexual violence. And I was very ashamed. I withdrew myself from my community, from my friends. I was ashamed and fearful. I thought it was my fault. And I was so afraid that somebody would make fun of me. So I withdrew myself and I started the loneliest episode in my life for the next following five years. I was just really lonely. And With the age of 20, I had reached this point where I knew I was either going to kill myself very soon or I just had to do something. And in this moment of crisis, I reached out to a good friend and she convinced me to just try therapy. And at this moment, my life started to turn into a better direction with the help of therapy and thousands of workshops. But also what happened in the recent years is that I started to change. <laughs> um, I like to explore the world. I'm very curious. And with loneliness, I also try to decode it. I read a bunch of books and papers and talked about it with friends and, and family and just try to figure out what is loneliness? Why are there so many people feeling lonely? Or am I the only one feeling lonely? And today I'm really happy that I get to crunch it all together and yeah, show you what I found. So first, um, there's so many people feeling lonely, right? In the US, almost 80% as I covered in the other talk, 80% of the younger generation feel lonely today. In Europe, it's only 8 to 55%. So what do we do if most of our population just feels lonely? Well, the United Kingdom did something really cool in 2018. They invented the Ministry of Loneliness. The Ministry of Loneliness in the UK has three big goals. The first goal is to get better data because we can only change a problem, we can only really change something on a structural level if we understand it really well, if we really know who does it affect, how many people does it affect, what countermeasures are really important. Then the second goal of the Ministry of Loneliness is to bring better policies into life, to enable better discussions about loneliness, and also to end the stigma around loneliness so that more people can open up so that we can start to talk about it because it's such a common human experience. 
and one really shouldn't be ashamed for it. And the third big goal is social prescribing. So in the UK, it's pretty cool. You can go to the doctor and say, hey, I feel lonely. And instead of prescribing you a medication, a drug, he can socially prescribe you something. So he can ask a social worker to work with you or a coach um, or an association like the talking shop, which is like a small community center where people can get together and talk or boxing futures where young people can get together and express themselves in movement or community gardens where people can work together on projects, being in the sun, outside, getting their hands dirty and into the soil, which has proven in many papers that this is really beneficial, but most importantly, getting out of their bubble, getting in contact with different people and forming new relationships and getting this feeling of accomplishing something together. I want to remind us all that all these great stories, especially those Hollywood stories, they have the similar narrative. At the beginning, you have a hero that is lonely, that is alone, and he, she has a quest. Take Frodo, for example. He has this ring that he kind of inherited. What to do? And ta-da, suddenly he not only has one friend, or two friends, but he has a whole fellowship. And together they solve this, even though they get scattered and things get rough at the edges. So I think the important thing is, let's get on this quest. Let's find our fellowship and solve this problem. I think we as society, we need to build a culture of connection. We need to find new ways to relate with each other. We need our shift, our tension from ourselves and how we can make ourselves the best version of ourselves, how to find the next level of perfection and rather change this focus, shift this focus to how can I support and uplift and empower other people? Rather, what can I do for me to make me happier and better? To what can I do for you? And this has been actually proven in studies that people who want to better themselves are better off looking after other people, looking out for someone else, because it activates uh, this part in our brain that wants to feel this connection, that wants to feel like we belong. It's also the experience that I met when I was actually working as a professional cuddler. There were so many people that would come to me seeking connection, seeking reassurance that I would still matter, that I was still being seen in this world. Because the society tends to leave, leave people behind that are not up to all the standards. And what I've showed in, previous in the previous parts is that there's a snowball effect. So once a person becomes lonely, may it be because there was um, this ha a heart shattering life event, because there's enormous amount of grief or because they lost their job, something can happen in a person's life. And like it was for me, this terrible experience of becoming a victim of sexual violence and then the spiral starts and it just got worse and worse for me and it's really important that especially then that we look out for each other and help each other one thing that i really learned in the last years one thing that really helped me a concept was to differentiate between feeling lonely and feeling alone because I realized that a tree can stand alone in the desert but a tree cannot be lonely in the desert. There, that alone is an objective state of 
being in the state where one is not um, with 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 other similar beings, like a tree not being with other trees, or a human not being with other humans. And being lonely is this very subjective, very individual feeling of disconnection. And I think, especially in these times of lockdown, it's so important to make this difference, to see, okay, I can be alone in this objective state, but that does not mean that I have to feel lonely. I can still feel connected. I can still be connecting with people through technology. But I can also be connected with myself, finding this feeling of love within. I can also go out and connect through creating art, through letting myself be touched by art, through interacting and being in nature, I can, there's so many ways that we can connect in this world, be it through meaningful work or be it through friends and relationships. And we can even find these friends and relationships these days simply online. There's often this point being made, the social media and technology is detrimental to our social relationships. But I think it's important to make this point that as I digged a little bit deeper, I could not really find that evidence there. It is true. There is this big mistake that we can make with social media. We can look at Instagram and we can start to compare these highlighted pictures, the holiday pictures, the best day pictures with our everyday lives. And this is a problem, of course. Um, this is another problem of another sign of a very materialistic society where it's important to have the most spectacular holiday, the best partner, the best body, the best work, the best whatever, to just be perfect at whatever we do and have the best stuff. But this is not making us happy. What's happy is the stuff that is really hard to capture in pictures and that does not need pictures. What's really important is to have great relationships, great connections, is to feel connected in this world so that we together can build this culture of connection. Um, today, again, I listened to another podcast by Vivek Murthy, um, a general former general surgeon of the US who recently wrote a book on loneliness and he had this nice idea on the different levels of connection that we can have in our lives and that I just want to share. Vic Vagmorty says there's like different layers of connection that we can build. There's like an outer layer. So how am I connected to my community, my society or do I build connection when I'm out there on the street or waiting on the bus? Do I smile to someone or do I just drag on? How is this really this outer layer? Then there's this more intimate, more closer level or inner circle of friends and family, the people that we trust and that we love. And it's really great when we can reach out to those and share authentically with them. And then at the very center, what's really important is the connection that we have with ourselves. How, what do we feel when we look into the mirror? What do we feel when we stare at our own reflection? What do we feel when we place our hands on our hearts? What do we think about when we sleep, before we fall asleep at night? So these are the different levels where we can find connection. And it's really important that we may feel lonely when we feel disconnected in any of those layers. So yeah, this was a bit of an overview on different ideas that hopefully 
can help with creating a culture of connection. One last point that I find really important and that helped me so much is embracing vulnerability. Vulnerability is this phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal concept by Brené Brown. <laughs> um, and it is all about being authentic and open, like about me not being able to say phenomenal at the first try, but also just rather at the third or fourth try. Phenomen phenomenal, right? Vulnerability is about opening up. It's about not sugarcoating our lives, but speaking and living our truth. Vulnerability is asking, how are you? And expecting more than just a fine, yeah, great. Vulnerability is getting deeper than this level of superficiality and being present with someone else. And as I started to embrace vulnerability, which is still so scary to do, my relationships, the connections I had, my friendships started to shift. Because so long in my life, I would close myself off. I wouldn't share what was going on inside, but would just tell people the story that I thought they wanted to hear. And when I started dropping this, this armor, when I stopped dropping these masks and just st started to be me, it was really liberating to see that people still liked me. And even more, that these connections felt real and that they touched me and nurtured my hunger for connection on such a deeper level. I think we need to build our culture of connection. We need to build a culture that values authenticity and not materialism or superficiality. We need to embrace our vulnerability and stop it with this facade of perfection. We need to build a culture of connection. I guess the corona crisis is a terrible pandemic, but there is also this chance so many people now have this experience of loneliness. So many people now can relate and we can now end this big stigma. We have, we've built this society that makes so many people on such a huge scale feel lonely and disconnected. And I think it is time to change that. I believe that on a planet with over 7 billion people. Nobody should feel alone. We have tons of technology that helps us connect to even the farthest regions and corners of the world. We have an abundance of resources. We can make the shift and we can become a culture of connection. We can build a place, a happier place a place that I would be happy to call home. I think back to my 15-year-old self and I wish I could tell her that it's going to be okay. And I wish if I ever had a daughter, she wouldn't have to make this experience. She wouldn't have to feel so lonely. Um, thank you so much for listening to this talk and yeah um take care i love you bye